All right, well, um, let's see. Let's talk about a little bit of news. Um, nothing on the big forefront of WordPress, except WordPress, I believe, has exceeded 35% at this point now in terms of how many websites are built on WordPress. So that's kind of cool. Um, also, let's see, Envato or not Envato, um, Elementor has raised their rates. So <laughs> if you're an agency and you have an uh, Elementor, it's, you, uh, you better buy it now, apparently, before they raise their rates in March. So um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, in terms of Houston WordPress, Word camp, still no idea. Um, I've got an email from the hotel and I need to kind of respond to them to give them some kind of answer. I don't know what we're, what we're doing. There's been a waning interest in this lately. Um, hopefully if we can maybe get back in person meetings, we can kind of ramp up a little interest, but um, so I don't know what we're gonna do right now. Um, Mike uh, is hopefully going to kick off his own meetup. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do. He's getting a little bit more involved. So that's nice to see. And um, so I can't wait to see what he does in terms of his own meetup. He's going to probably focus a lot more on developers and code, uh, which is great. And so I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Um, I For the next meetup, I've got Chris Lemma. He's going to come out and be a speaker in March, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Chris. He uh, he's kind of big in the WordPress space. He's done he's done a lot for many different companies. He's going to talk about memberships next month. Uh, I'm not sure exactly specifically, but he's got a whole blog post about it. So he's going to talk about it. He just moved here out of California. So um, he got to experience uh, Houston <laughs> weather. Okay. I, I said, don't think this happens ever again. Like this is so unusual. What an uh, intro. Yeah, right. Yeah. Welcome to Houston. <laughs> um, actually, I think he got here last spring. Um, but yeah, he's over here in new territory. Ironically, he's just down the road from me. But um, so he'll be, he'll be coming out in March. And I just got his topic and his bio and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go back over and add that. Um, I am still looking a speaker for April and May. So if anyone has any topics they'd like to share, that'd be great. Love to hear it. So hi, Julie. Hello. <laughs> Good to be here. Yay. Um, let's see. Let's get me uh, talk a little bit about some of our sponsors. So right now we've got Nixie Host. And if you haven't checked them out, nixiehost.com. They are... Um, uh, WordPress hosting company, but I'm sure they host any other kind of website. They're here in Houston. And we've got Black Sheep Agency. So they are more of a community driven kind of agency. They're very, very creative and they work very closely with the nonprofit community. Fort Bend Chamber is a sponsor as well. And they are um, kind of working obviously in the Fort Bend area, helping other businesses and the economy and the community, I should say, um, kind of helping this area grow and who am I missing? Oh, Global Specs, me. <laughs> I was like, there's some other sponsor I'm missing. Um, yeah, and so I typically, my company typically works with oil and gas, energy and construction companies. Um, so we do a lot of digital marketing all the way from lead generation, SEO, PPC development, all that fun stuff. So we're having a good time with that. All right, so uh, news-wise, anyone have any other news that they want to share that, that's going on in their world? I know that uh, Chris just had a website go live, so we're gonna, she's going to share that website with us. Uh -huh. what we, Rick, what are you going to say? Something? Oh, I was going to say uh, uh, version 5.7 is not very far away. Okay. Is not anything about that version that's something we well, need to know about? it's going to uh, put us several steps closer to full uh, full site editing. Okay. So full site editing for Gutenberg? Yep. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Really interesting to see that. All right. Um, okay. So I'm going to dig right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Beaver Builder from the back end. I just want to show you the difference between the free plugin of Beaver Builder. So if you've got a, a ready-made theme, Beaver Builder can be added as a simple like um, 
editor just for certain sections within Beaver Builder. That's the free version. The premium version allows you to do way more um, in terms of the content itself, um, all the way from the header to the footer. Um, and then they've got an, a more advanced version called Beaver Themer, which actually lets you practically completely change your theme without really knowing code. So I'm gonna show you each one of those. I'm gonna start off with the free version, and then I'm gonna switch the theme to a Beaver theme and show you what that looks like. And then I'll talk a little bit more about Themer. The other areas I wanna show you when it comes to Beaver Builder is um, what I use to help me uh, improve the process when I'm building things out and to make sure that I'm maintaining the brand color and the scheme and making sure I'm consistent without knowing code. I'm not gonna even talk about CSS or any of that. Um, I'm just purely gonna do all front end here. Then uh, the other area was, uh, what was the third, what was the other one? Oh, show you how saving time using global rows, global modules, global columns, and even creating your own page templates. So uh, again, without code. So I'm going to start here. All right, so this, hold on, share my screen. Uh, let's see, let me get this so that's probably better visual like that. All right, how's that looking? You guys can see that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I literally just, um, from scratch website, I just put a couple of pages in and uh, I just used the default uh, theme that came with WordPress. So I just wanted to show you, this is just, if you just have your own theme and we're just gonna use the free version Beaver Builder plugin. So after you've logged in, right? So this is, you can see obviously the black bar at the top, that means you've logged in. We're now going through and we're gonna edit this page. So don't hit edit page. That's just gonna get you into the Gutenberg editor itself. So you wanna hit Beaver Builder and you'll notice that I'm only, I'm limited to just this area here. So this is just the, the content area of this page. So on the right, I can now start adding some content in here. I can put a heading. Um, I can um, put in some content in here, a little text editor, so I can do a little lorem ipsum here. And then, and as you can see, it's very similar to just any WYSIWYG editor where I can put links and bolds and quotes and all that fun stuff. And just that, that same toggle here, where I can get a little bit more information. Um, and so, but I'm limited. This is all I can do at this point. I can't touch the header. I can't touch the, the footer. I'm limited to just this. So if you've got, if you're building out websites for somebody and you, you like your theme, but you wanna give them some editorial tool, you, this is a good option where they can go in and they can change text. Um, when you're done, you hit done and publish. The cool thing about this is if I've made a mistake, I can hit discard and everything will just go back to the where, where I had originally when I first opened it. The other is I'm not ready to publish it yet, but I might come back tomorrow and finish it so I can hit save draft. So if I hit publish, it's live. Everybody can see it ready to go. It's live. Um, now that's, that's the free version. And I'm, and I'm not gonna go into all the different modules at this point, maybe when I get further into um, the premium version, all of, let me open it back up again. This, the basic is all comes with Beaver Builder. So audio, icons, call outs, that's all kind of Beaver Builder. You can buy extensions like, um, uh, what, I think I have it in here. Yeah, Power Pack is, is an add-on that you can buy. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. And of course, it's got the same WordPress widgets as you would any built-in WordPress site. So, you know, you can throw in any of these that typically you would see them on the sidebar of a, of a website. You can do the same here. Um, so I typically, I try to stick with the, the standard modules uh, if we're getting a little fancy, I'll pull in my power pack modules. You can see it, it just it just extends the module ability on this. So there's a lot of options in here. The rows are kind of nice. So if you want to kind of break out your content here, I'm going to throw in like a two columns. So now I've got two columns here. I can now take this, put it in this column and move this and put that in this column, right? Super easy to move things around. 
Um, I can take it back out again and put it up on top. If I want, I can put in uh, an, maybe three columns. So now I got three. If you find you don't need three, I can click this and I've now got two. So you can see all the columns settings here. I can do pre-built rows. You know, you can just, you could really kind of go to town on some of this stuff. Um, you can look at, uh, I'll get into save columns later. That's, I just want to show you some of the basics of Beaver Builder. Um, templates are pre-made designed pages that you can just grab. So this might, let's just, the problem with this is if it's not with your theme, it's not going to look right. So you don't necessarily want to grab a whole landing page on this. You might want to pull in, I don't know, I haven't used this. I don't even know what it's going to do. Yeah, so I can replace everything I've done and it's just gonna, it's just gonna take in that content and just replace just in this box. So uh, you can replace it or you can append, meaning it'll add below what you want. Uh, and then these are your saved. So when I talk a little bit later about uh, in kind of speeding up your development of a website, this is where we'll get into saved rows, saved columns and saved modules. So. Uh, meaning that if I were to save this, I can save as, I can create a saved module and then I can pull this module in anytime I want on any page and it will have the same style that I've created on this page. Um, the difference being I could create this as a, as a global module, meaning if I save this as global, anytime I change it here, it gets changed throughout the site. So it's a really nice way if you've got the same kind of module or row, you can save that and not have to repeat, keep adding that same row. You just add that one time in. And if you ever need to change it, you do it one time at one place and it gets changed throughout the site. So depending on how where you wanna put this, this is a really great way of, of kind of saving time. And I'll get, I'll show you later what we're doing. All right, so that's, that's kind of the free version. And let me show you, I'm gonna switch out now. I'm gonna get into the premium version of Beaver Builder. But first I have to change out the theme. And to change out the theme, you wanna have the Beaver Builder theme itself. And you definitely wanna create a child theme. If you don't know how to create a child theme, we can do that, show you guys with that later. But right now I've got, I think, hold on, let me see if this is, that's my Astro one. So this is, uh, where it is, there it is. So that's my child theme of a Beaver Builder theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate this. And now you'll see when I switch it out, it kind of, it's just default. All I did is I'm just, I defaulted and it's not very pretty right now. It's purely just basic, basic. So I'm gonna walk you through, we're gonna build a home page with Beaver Builder. And, but before we do that, we've got the theme. It's been switched over to a Beaver Builder child theme. And if you guys get confused or I'm going too fast, just say something, it's okay. <laughs> this, is, this is more interactive here. So if I'm, if I'm confusing you or you're, you're like, hold on, how did you do that? Just stop me. One so, quick question, yeah. Christina. Mm -hmm. the, the Beaver Builder theme, is that the themer you were talking about or not? So Beaver, Beaver Themer is an add-on. So there's Beaver okay. Builder, the free one. There's Beaver Builder Pro that gives me way more functionality. And then the Beaver Themer allows me even more flexibility. I can control every element of a web page. Okay, I was just checking when they have this Beaver Builder theme, if this is the themer or if that's still no, sort of stationary. different. No, yeah, okay. it's a good point. Yeah, the theme is, is one thing. Now, when you come here, you'll see there's Beaver Themer. It's, a, it's like theming your theme. <laughs> so now we've got our theme has been switched. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna do the basic stuff for this point. I just wanna make sure I get the same, the right colors. So I've got, uh, I don't typically do presets, but let's do general. So I'm gonna make sure my layout is set. I like the full width layout. I've got options here, but I like the full width. Um, okay, I, like um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So sorry. Um, so I don't know what is the child theme that you spoke about. I, I don't think I um, got that one. So the difference between a parent theme and a child theme. So when you have a parent theme, that's essentially the core theme. 
that's usually the theme that gets updated by the developer. That's the theme you want to make sure is constantly updated because there might be functionality in there. There might be some code that's got to get fixed. The thing is you don't want to mess with the parent theme. You always want to create a child theme, which let me refresh because I don't think it's activated here. This is the theme that's kind of, um, uh, how do I explain it? It's this is the theme where you can make changes and not worry about the parent theme being updated. Okay. This is this part of it. You can do colors and styles and and not and not worry about it getting uh, ruined if a developer makes a functional change. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. so, if you have a um, Beaver uh, Builder, for example, you have the theme and then the child theme, and those are kind of um, what is it linked somehow that you can yes. make? Yes. Okay. You'll notice that this says this is a child theme of the Beaver Builder theme. Can you, so they're, show, me, they're linked. Can you show us where the Beaver Builder theme is for this child theme? What do you mean? Well, I don't. I see an orange Beaver Builder that says Beaver Builder theme, but how is it associated with the child theme? So this is the this is the main theme. So this is just the main theme here. Okay. And then I, I created a child theme here. This is also a child theme. This came with Beaver Builder. So you could just, you could activate this and, and, and edit this. This came with it. But I, I create my own child theme. I just recommend anybody, if you're doing this, create your own child theme. Don't, don't work on the primary theme. We need to have a WordPress meetup about themes. <laughs> we need to go more detail about the difference in them. Um, and you can actually, there's plugins to help you create a child theme. But I highly recommend anytime you build any site, create a child theme first and then start having fun with it. Because this, this builder builder theme, this gets constantly updated. I have a question. So the child theme you work on and then after you perfect it, you, you link them together. Is that what you do? No. So... I don't want to get too much into this because we've only got another 45 minutes, but the child theme, how do I tell you guys? Typically we have a developer create a child theme, but you can have, there's a plugin called, uh, I think it's the child theme. Yeah, there's child theme configurator, child theme generator. There's all these little plugins you can do. I think I actually got this activated on this one. Let's see if I can open it up here. If you think of a child theme, it's it's uh, isolates your modifications from the parent theme. Mm -hmm. So whenever the parent theme is changed, the the uh, modifications that you made are not thrown away. Yeah, it almost sounds like a little backwards. Your your child theme will will control your site regardless of the changes on your parent theme. You don't want the developer making a change in the parent theme and then wiping out any changes you had on your site. <laughs> yeah, in the early days of WordPress, this was a big problem. Every time you updated a theme and if you made changes or customized it, it would wipe it out. I remember uh, at the WordPress or WordCamp in Dallas, I asked Matt how, how to do that, how to uh, update a theme and not wipe out everything and he didn't. There wasn't an answer at that point because child themes hadn't come into being yet. Right, so when you create, you, you can use any of these plugins, these child theme configurator plugins, it'll help you and walk you through. So in this case, you can do, I can create a new one. I can configure from an existing one. So I know that there's the, a Beaver Builder child theme already in there. So you can just use that one or configure an existing child theme. You check this and you can call it, you know, whatever. So if I choose this one, this is the child theme. It's gonna analyze it for me. Is it a true child theme? Child theme has not been configured. It does not require style for da da da. Just walk through it. Primary, yep, I'm gonna pull in the primary. Do not add any parent style sheets, yep. And it click this and it'll actually generate a new child theme for me. And that's the one I'm going to, you know, edit styles and colors and, you know, all of that. So 
you need the parent theme is the one that gets updated. The child theme is the one that you're going to configure and, and, and kind of beautify. All right, so back over in here, let's go back into my appearance. So I've got my child theme. Now I'm going to customize it a little bit. I just want to get the core colors. And this is essentially, it is for any theme, honestly. Any theme's going to have this customize, customization section on here. So general, I'm going to probably stick out with a full, full width. Um, CSS framework, don't worry too much about that. I've got Font Awesome is installed as well. Uh, my background, I'm probably just going to stick with the white. My accent colors, I'm probably going to switch out to my logo that I have already installed on here. So my logo is, hold on one second. I pull out from my logo here, the colors, the hex colors, change that. And I can change my hover color is, uh, what was my hover color? It was this one. And I change that. So those are my hover colors, my accent colors. You're not gonna see them yet because I haven't done anything big time. So there's my other color here. I'm gonna change that. And again, I'm trying to be consistent with my brand. And let's go, if I want, I can change the font style here. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is for now. You can change font sizes, the height, all of that. These are your H1. So these are your primary headings, right? This is, this is an H1. I believe this might be an H2 in here. Uh, that should not be a beige one, actually. Let's see, text, probably make that a little bit darker. I don't like it when I have gray text. I, I can change the font family. I'm just gonna do a Georgia here. I can change the font size. So if I wanna make it 18, a little bigger. I can change the buttons, right? So I've got color, I've got the background color. So I'm gonna use that same brand here. And I'm going to use here and I'm just going to slightly make this a little lighter like that. And my social links, I just went ahead and put in, you can put your Facebook links in there. And this comes into play on some of the modules. Uh, I hit publish. So this is just the core. I've just got my colors. I've got my style. I've got my width is set up. Now let's look into header here. I'm typically probably, I'm probably not going to mess with this too much, but I can set it up so that I've got this top bar up here. I'm not, I'm gonna probably, I don't want a top bar right now. So this is usually there's a little top bar at the top. Sometimes it's like a little phone number at the top and social media links. So I don't really, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna have my header. So I'll probably have my navigation um, on the right. I'm gonna fade it in. Hold on one second, guys, because I think it's, I don't want to show you Themer yet. I need to turn that off really quick. Sorry. Because it's not changing. There we go. There we go. Okay, because it wasn't changing. There we go. All right. Header, top bar layout one column, if I'm gonna put that at the very top, you can see now it's got that one column at the top. Um, I can put in some text here, so I can say call five, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, four, pulls into the top. I can do uh, my header layout, navigations on the right if I'd like. I could put it nav centered, kind of makes that little look there and my header logo. So I'm gonna select the logo that I've already uploaded here. Don't forget your alt tag. That's too big. <laughs> and we don't worry about that too much. Usually uh, if you have a different logo, when you have a fade in header, so when you, when you scroll up, the header gets a little smaller. Sometimes you can, you can change out what that logo looks like or if you want a different mobile header. So let's see here, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go back out here. Uh, let's do that, header logo. Uh, where is it? It's too big. I thought I could change the style. Background header, where is my 
Hmm. There was a spot where you where you had your logo, and it, it there was a slide bar where you could go from forty six to. Did it? Uh huh. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's not on there. It's not on the logo. It's uh, there was another. There it is. Font size. No, nope. There was a. There was a logo size. Well, for now, I'm just going to show you this part. Um, when I get into Themer, I'll be able to do a lot more with it. But all right, so there's my header logo. My nav layout, I can add a uh, little search icon on the right if I'd like. If I've got a pretty big site, I might use that. Um, I can decide on the responsive nav toggle if I want a menu button or a hamburger icon and decide do I want it on medium and small, meaning like an iPad and an iPhone or just an iPhone. So I like to do it on, on an iPad or a medium size as well as a small device. And I can kind of make decide how big I want this. And let's go back out this way, nav style. I can decide there's a lots of options on here. I don't want to get too much into all of this. I just wanted to kind of get you a little familiar with how you can kind of adjust this header. Uh, let's see, I don't really, I'm not going to mess with that too much. My footer, that's would be a little bit further down here. Uh, let's see my footer layout. I can have again, one column and you can see it already kind of pulls in some of the, the basic stuff that you would find out. You can have a footer style. So if I want that background. Just out of curiosity, why mm -hmm. do they call that a column or a, a, a column when it goes across, I would call that a row. It's a column, it's a single column in a single row. Okay. Because I can do, I can do two columns if I want, but right now it's just one column. So if I went two columns, I can do that. And then I can change what's in this, the far right and the far left. And my footer style. So I put some little color into it. Let's see if I can change that text so it's a little brighter. And I'm not gonna really get into the link colors, but obviously you can change that. And I'm not doing any parallax effect on the footer for now, which gives you that illusion of a sticky pit, a sticky image, and then it kind of scrolls up, kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna publish this for now. And get back out of here. I'm gonna see if I can open up. So you can see it's very different from what I had before I've got a lot more ability to kind of make some changes. You can see as it as I scroll up, that little feature shows up with the with the hover at the very top of my navigation stick stick becomes sticky. And now in here, I can make more adjustments. Here now I've got the entire width is now an ability for me to do what I what I would like. So now I can add a little bit more here. Um, I can do three columns. Drag this in three columns. Now here's where I can get fancy, where I can make this a full width and a full width here. So the width would be full width and even in my content would be full width. So it would be completely spread depending on the width of my browser and it would, it would collapse as, I, as the browser gets smaller or bigger. So you can see, so I can do this or I can make it the content width would be within that 1200 pixel width that I created and it would stick within these margins here. So it kind of keeps a consistent margin wise or you say, you know, I want full width. I want to go all the way across and kind of, you can do that. So for now, I'm just going to keep it fixed. Um, advanced, I can do some padding here so I can make it zero. And if I click this little link values, it'll take it across the board. So I'm zeroing out any any margins, any padding, I'm just making it zero. You can do that a little further up here where I can do a global setting. So anytime I add any features in here, I can set it so that this padding is zero. So I can zero, zero it out each time. My max width I can set here as well. I can, if I feel like I want a 1300 max width and that's content. So right now I'm set the whole, the whole width here, but the content, I can decide if it's 1200 pixels, 1500 pixels. So here I, you know, it depends. Sometimes we do 2100 pixels to get a little bit more width out because our desktop monitors are typically a little larger. So again, I can do set the default to zero margin, zero padding pixels. I can change it to percentage if I want. And my modules, I can zero that out as well. 
any margins there. And here we can do the breakout with a mobile devices. So if I find that I can change this to 990, 1000, and that's again, the, a medium size that might be a tablet, um, iPad, you can set the small devices, uh, you know, your Android or your iPhone. And I, I don't typically, I don't touch these. I, I leave them to the default. They know what they're doing. That's, those are the average widths. Um, use responsive settings and previews. Yes, you, I usually say yes, because I want to see what my site's going to look like in a mobile device. And I'll show you what that, what that looks like. So I hit save. Now I've kind of set the global default on all this. You can see it, it expanded this all out. But if I, want, if I want for this page, I can change it so that it's, um, you can see I've changed the fixed width now is 2100 pixels width. Now I can go back to global and set it to 1200 if I want. So in advanced, here's some more fun stuff. So I can, uh, the break point. So if there's, a, if there's a row here and I don't want anyone to see this row right now, I can display to never. So it might be a feature you just, you're not sure about yet. Uh, you're kind of playing with this idea, but you want it on the site, you can set the display to never and then come back to it later and just still have a live site and keep working on it. I do this a lot. If I've got some concept in my head, I'll come into the page, I'll, I'll change it up a little bit, but I'm just, I'm not gonna display it anywhere until I'm ready. Uh, you can also set an animation if you want. You can have it fade in, a whole row kind of fade in. So that's where you're going to get fancy. You can fade in, you can fade left, slide left, you know, all this fun stuff. Don't go too crazy. Try and be consistent in any animation that you do. Try not to have a fade in and a zoom up and a bounce all on the same page or just it'll, it'll hurt people's eyes. Um, but it's, it gives you that, if you see people's websites, the, you know, blocks will kind of slowly kind of grayed up. That's kind of, that's where this is coming from. So I can fade yeah. in. Mm -hmm. what is, I really don't understand what the break point is. What does the break point do? Break point is designing if, if I, um, let's see, if I want this row to only show on large devices, let's say I've got um, a pretty large image and it's really meant for desktop. I only want it to show on desktop. So I can say only show on a large device. Okay. If I've got, uh, but maybe I've got the same image, um, but I've got the image itself is way more compressed and it looks much better on a mobile device, then I'll change it. I might duplicate, the, duplicate this. One will only show on a desktop. The next row I'll do for the compressed image to show on a mobile device only. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I have a I have a row where I had it um, five little boxes on it, mm -hmm. and I thought maybe this is where it was. Maybe you'll get there, but it looks good on iPhone. It looks good on the desktop. It looks terrible in the tablet. I couldn't figure out how to fix it. And the tablet has got five teeny weeny little skinny rows instead of having <laughs> blocks or something. Right. So I haven't been able to fix that particular thing, but it looked good on good otherwise so right so so let's just do this so i've got a large this is set to large rise let me just change the colors here so if i scroll down i can change the background color on this to a color and then i can change this um let's i'm actually going to x these out this is a a nice way of keeping cons the brand consistent again so i've got let's get this out here too I'm going to keep the white. So I'm going to add this. So next time I color preset, I can just click here. If I want now, I've, let me get the other color. That's that blue. I'm going to add that to the color preset, right? And so again, this is a really great way to make sure you maintain consistency in your brand colors. Uh, let's do that same color, but I'm just going to make it maybe a little bit lighter actually i've already got the color set up here where's my blue uh yeah let's just make that blue like that and then i'm going to add that and now i've got these three primary color presets in here so i've got the whole row is now one color and i can change this i can actually make this a photo if i want i click photo i click select photo and let's just say i'm going to use this 
image as the background. You can see now it's changed the background. And if I need to make it a little higher, I can do a minimum height of say 500 pixels or 400 pixels, let's just say. So now I've got the height now stays a good height and I can now position it. I can scroll it, I can fix. So the, the page isn't big enough, but it would, the photo remains fixed as I scroll up and down. Let's see, what else can I show you? Then, so let's just say that photo is pretty large. I really don't want this to show up on a mobile device because it might slow down the site. So I only want this to show on a large device. I'm gonna hit save. Now I can duplicate this. So it's gonna essentially duplicate this whole, the same row that I just did. And I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna get rid of the photo because I think it's too big. And I'm just gonna use a color. And, but now I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna say, I want this to show on medium and small devices. So I'm gonna just go ahead, I'm gonna hit done and I'm gonna hit publish. <laughs> it doesn't show, why aren't you showing? Uh... How come it didn't show? What the hell? Oh, this is always fun to show you guys. Huh. Photo, media library. Um, hold on. I think I've got my, um, let me turn off my caching here. Did you save it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe I didn't save it. Hold on. No, because it's not showing now. Repeat, none, fill, none. Background color, I don't need that. I've set that here. Why aren't you showing now? What is going on? Is it because you're on the larger monitor? If you so were I have it set, I have advanced, I have it set to large device only. That way it's not showing. Oh, because I have it set to never. Ugh, people, y'all are just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh my God. Point the fly. <laughs> there we go. All right, there we go. All right, cool. You know what, though? This is good because you know that when we get start noodling around in there, it's something mm -hmm. like that's going to happen to us. We go, oh, I remember that happened to Christina. Yes. That's what she did. She said it to none. <laughs> All right, so now you can see only this row is showing because I'm on a large device. And I, let me, when I start compressing it, then the blue will show. So nice little, nice little trick to make sure your site, the performance remains pretty good on any machine. So um, nice little trick there. Uh, what I do want to show you then also is I want to be able to save this row as a global row. So if I ever want to pull this in into any other page, I can click this little icon here. I hit save as, I hit global. And let's just say, um, I don't know, let's call this the, let's just say that the about us, give it a, give it a pretty specific name. Uh, Cause as you build this out, it'll be harder and harder to find it. Um, but so about us, contact us row, right? So I'm gonna call it global, hit yes. And you can see it turns orange. This means every time I drag this module in into any other page. Anytime I change this, it gets changed throughout the whole site. Now here is where I have that saved row. And there's that about us content. So I can drag this back in here. Now I've got two rows. I don't need it on this one here, but anytime now, I, if I click this, it's going to open up a new page and it's going to allow me to just change this specific section and if I want to now change the photo, like I realize mm, photo isn't what we want, client wants to change it, we want this photo instead. All right, so I hit select photo, I hit save, done, publish, it'll close this and now it's changed. And this, if this is on any other site or any other page, it, it repeats, it'll just, it'll change it throughout the site. So I highly recommend this if you've got the same content on multiple pages that way you, you're not going page by page by page to have to change something. If you're a programmer, this is what I called include files. <laughs> Back in the day, we called these include files where mm -hmm. we would create one little script 
and we would include it in our code. And that way I didn't have to go to 20 different pages to, to do this one little code script. I just would include this one little section. And this is essentially doing the same thing. Now, if I find out that I like this, I like the style, but I don't want, I want it to be a little bit different, but I want to change it throughout the site. If I duplicate this, it now will duplicate and now gives me this blue, blue again. Now I've got the same style, but I can now change it just for this specific page. So um, that was a little trick that I found out recently. I didn't think I could do that, but duplicating it on a single page allows me to change some of that content in there. Now, let's see, where's my, it won't let me change this now. It's gonna let me open it in order to make any changes. So I'm just gonna close this out for now. Now, if I wanna add, let's go ahead and add that header in here. And you can see as I'm dragging around, it's gonna let me know where, to, where it's gonna be placed. Change out that header, let's call this, you know, about us. And I can, it's now defaulted to the left. So I'm gonna go into the style and I'm going to center it for now. Move this out of the way. And you're, you're probably like, well, let me see. Let me. I'm going to make sure this is a white color, but don't don't do that. <laughs> Tr do it from the level, the highest level, and then go drill down. So if all of the text on here is going to be white, then I'm going to save this for now. I'm going to come back over here to the row itself, and I'm going to change the text color for the whole row. This way. And I see this all the time. My programmers do it. They go row bit by bit by bit and they make a white change. But what if you decide, well, I need this to be a light blue. Well, now you got to go module to module to module and every little section here and change the color. So if all if, if the majority of the text is going to be one color, do it from this level and then drill down. Um, now, if you're a programmer, you're probably thinking, Christina, why don't you do it in CSS? Yes. If you can, do it in CSS. If you know enough CSS, do it in CSS and use classes and divs. I'm only showing you guys from a front end standpoint what you can do. So y'all programmers out there probably just, oh my God, Christina, why aren't you doing it in CSS? All right, cuss, we're doing this front end, full on front end folks. Now, let's see, I'm gonna do a video. So let's grab a video. I'm going to drag this in here and I can either upload a video, which I do not recommend. Do not use a video in your media library. Just don't do it. Do an embed, either pulling in from Vimeo or pulling in from YouTube. And let's see, do I already have one in here? Nope. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's use, let's use this one here. Oh, look, Joanna. Yay. All right. Share, embed, I'm gonna copy this. Now I could do a little bit more, but I'll just leave it here. Let's go back here. I'm gonna paste. Now, oh, stop. Hit save. Should be a four or three error. Block the background request. Is it created? Okay. That's my security, I believe. Okay, let's do. Hit refresh. <laughs> let's see if it's gonna let me do this. There we go. Why are you doing that? Create a result of an intentional action. You may consider allow list. It's in a bed. There we go. Yes, it does happen to all of us guys. These little weird errors kick in every now and then. All right, so we got there in bed in here. I'm gonna actually get rid of this column so you see it makes it bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see a little text in here on the left. And just like everything else, I can, let me see if I can get some more ellipses in here. Just grab some text here. All right, so I'm gonna put some text in here. Now, if I just click out of here, 
it's it's our, it's usually automatically saving. I don't always have to click save every time. So that's a little tip too. Now you can see there's no margins here, not the prettiest thing here. So what I try and do again is start at the top and then drill down. So let me add some spacing in here. I can add that 30, 30 pixels. So you can see it's starting to add a little bit of padding all around it. So let's just make it a little bit bigger. Let's put that nice big 90 pixel. And if I hit this, it does it all the way across. When I uncheck it, I can do 60 here and 60 here. But for now, I'm just gonna hit, so that's all 90. And hit save. So I've got the padding all the way around it, but now I wanna put some padding in between these two columns. Now this is where you click this little edit column. I click here, I click column settings, and now I can adjust my padding just in that column. So on the right, let's just say I put that 90 again. You can see it automatically shows I got some padding here. Now, if I click out and I just click this, it'll save here and it'll open right to where I just that same setting. And now I can do left 90 and say 90 right. And you can see how it just really starts kind of filling in. And let's just do 90 at the top here. And now if I want, and we go back in here, add another, add 90 at the top to be consistent. And now we've added a much nicer kind of uh, white space in between here. So now again, I can drag this here and then I can go, well, I want that over here now. If I do notice I've got some, probably some padding in here, probably it's maybe a little bit too much. So let's go back in the column settings. Let's put that to zero, but I do want a little bit more on the left and hit save. Uh, let's see, I can even do in here, I can put another subtitle and I can give that like a heading three, hit save. It gives me a little bit more uh, kind of structure to, to this. Now I can even change the color of this specific column. If I scroll down, I can do a color, I can do a photo, I can do a gradient color. And now I'm gonna go back to my color presets. I kind of want this to be this darker. And now I've got, it's not very pretty right now, but you can see where I can now change just that little column section here. So let's go back over in here. I'm gonna add some padding to the right again, let's do 60 for now. Let's do some more padding adjustments here because now I kind of want to put some more margin, but now I don't want as much padding. Oh, that's, no, that's not good either. Let's do 30 and let's do 30 here. And now I've got a little section. Oh, I don't want to save it. Uh, let's see, this is probably another area Let's do 30 is where I had it. Nope, I'm gonna put that 30 in there. Is that 30? I think you had the other one 60. Did I have 60? Oh, I had 60 at the margin. Yep, there we go. Now, uh, I don't think I've got this turned on here. Let's see. Oops. Mm, you can see that my programmers typically do some of this stuff when I muck it up. So <laughs> uh, let's see if I do 30 this way. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So anyway, that's a, it's a nice way of to kind of, if you want to, if you're looking at different ways of kind of breaking things out and kind of giving some attention, uh, let's see. One other area too is I'm going to actually make sure that this is visible on all devices for now. And it's just like you can with rows and columns and modules, you can, this whole row can be animated. So I can animate this and I can have it fade in and give it, you know, maybe a second and a half, maybe a one second delay. If I hit publish, Right, nice little subtle feature, some animation kind of kicks in. Again, try not to do too much of that though. It gets a little, little scary. So 
now let's see if I want to go to the about us page. Let's go in this one here. I'm trying to think what other areas I was going to show you the page templates global rows. So now I want to take that same global row that I did with the photo. I go saved. Then there's my global row here and I can drag that in. Let's just put it below the about us. So it's the same row. And let's see, let's put a little bit more. Let's put this so that we've got some. So this is where I would think to myself, hmm, probably want to put some padding globally throughout the whole site and default this. So I might go back and change this to that 60 um, all the way across so that I don't have to do this module by module. But for now, now I can also, if I, if I want, I've already got one column here. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do one, I'm going to add a column. So I'm going to come back here, I'm going to drag this here and now it's two columns. Or I can drag this down here and now I've got three columns. But again, I can always just adjust this. And you can even, you can do column within a column. So I can do here, here, and here. Now, if I want, I can adjust the width of this column. So right now it's set to 50%. So if I want this to be 30%, it's now a third, a third, and a third. And I can drag this out so that's at the top, set this to, I don't really wanna do this. I need to make sure I set this at the primary level. All right. Is this making sense? Am I going too fast? Awesome, all right, good deal. So these are just kind of the, do mm -hmm. you have a question? Um, this is kind of the basic stuff in here. There's a lot, I'm just trying to give you guys an overview let me now get into themer. I'm going to activate themer now, which is the next level. So we have the beginner level of just some uh, an area that you can just edit. And then we've got another level where we've got the content within the site that you can do a lot more. You just can't touch the header or the footer and you're kind of limited. Now let's, the themer is next level stuff. This is where I can, I have so much more control and I can do some pretty amazing things, again, without knowing code or CSS. And let's start this off. Let me open up the plugin here, themer. And Beaver Themer and Pro, uh, these are premium. So oh, they, deleting, did I delete it? Oh, shit. Yes, you did. Dang it, hold on. <laughs> So the basic theme that comes with it, you can't edit the headers or the footers? You can, but you're limited to the theme. You can get Beaver Builder themes, but you're limited to that customizer I was showing you. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Let me go grab it again. Explain why I had taken a, a Udemy class on Beaver uh, mm -hmm. Build. I got frustrated with it because I was like, it's not letting me want to do what I wanted to do. And I was like, well, I don't like this. I'm not going to use this. So I gave up on it. But I think now I know why I gave up. On it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it only, it depends on the theme and what you're able to do with it. So where is my beaver builder? Here it is. Oh, my themer. I have way too many beaver. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> You guys were supposed to stop me before I click that button. Um, Beaver Themer. We also learned by what not to do. <laughs> right? I'm totally you showing you what not to do and all the things that. Normal... Can't you just search it over here? Up on their key? Not it's key. a premium. We can't just download download it. Oh, oh, I see. Beaver, build, Beaver Theme Builder. I think this is it. You're like, stop, no, yeah, there it is, cool. All right, uh, Beaver Themer is activated, awesome. All right, so Themer layouts. Oh, you're really gonna do that to me, really? <laughs> oh, there we go, okay. It wasn't activated even though it said it was. There we go, all right. Now the difference now is we have Themer layouts. Now, I've already done the footer and the header, but I'll, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna delete, I'm gonna trash this footer and I'm gonna trash the header. So right now, when I go to the site, it should just be having the same stuff. 
So I'm going to go back into Themer. I'm going to add a new layout. I'm going to call it header, Themer layout. And it's the structure is the header. So anytime that this theme, that's why you need a Beaver Builder theme. It allows you to do this. Add the Themer layout. So I've got some options in here. Don't ignore this. I can make it sticky so that it always stays up at the top. I'm just going to say no for now. I can have an overlay. So you have that nice where the you have a nice image in the background and it's transparent. If you've seen that, that's what the overlay is. I can even choose this location. This is where it kind of gets kind of cool. So if you've got maybe a membership site or if you've got e-commerce or something, you can determine what header will show on what type of um, page. So I can have the entire site. So I'm just obviously going to choose that for now. I can set it so that the search results has a totally different um, header, maybe a slightly off color to just visually that you're on the, the search results, your 404 page. But in this case, I'm just going to choose the entire site. I can add an exclusion. So all of the pages except for maybe the blog pages. I want it to be a different header. So lots of options here. And again, this is something I would play with. I would put this on like a, another host account or a, a staging site that you can just kind of mess with this and just kind of have fun with it, really just play with it. Then before you work on your own live site. Now, so now I've got this set, up. I'm gonna hit publish. And I'm gonna launch Beaver Builder and it should just be plain Jane. This is just the default that shows up. So typically I kind of, let's see, do I have, yeah, I kind of delete this. I don't really like these top headers. Now I can add in that logo. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna change this color out. So I'm going to use no color. Let's make sure it's white, I want that white color. My text though, I'm gonna choose darker blue. Again, this is the row level. Now I'm gonna add in the image, my photo. I want my logo in here. I'm gonna select photo. Please tell me that, there you go, all right. My logo, now it's just too big. So I'm probably gonna use 150 by 150 and I'll hit save for now. So now I've got my logo in here. Um, if you're, if you can maybe put in your header, so this might be construction, uh, if I can spell. Two. Now this is my menu, but I want my menu to be primary here. And I'm probably gonna drag this to its own column. So, and then I'm gonna, I can actually drag this. Hmm? Let me make this manual here. Let me do 12, there we go. Now I'm gonna change this to, let's just say 30. And I'm gonna equalize the heights and then make this maybe a top so that this is at the top or I could make this center. Oh, this sucker got dragged. There we go. Now this is a weird color. So let's see what's happening here. Why is that? So in the, again, this is why I don't like putting in um, colors within the module itself. So, but in this case, I might do a link hover color it might be this light, lighter blue. And again, you can get as fancy as you want and hit save. So it's kind of wide out there. Uh, let's see if I can maybe go back into my global settings uh, let's change this to that 1200 pixel. Kind of shore this up. There we go. All right, that's better. Now I can drag this a little bit so you can see how it makes it. I can kind of change this. And let's say I want to add a little bit more space here. So you can see you just kind of kind of play with it if you want. And all right, so there's my header for now. Somewhat decent. And now I can 
hit Beaver Builder, it'll hit, hit this again. Let me open up the themes again. No, I mean, themer, Beaver Themer. So there's my header. It's published, it's turned on, and it's set up so that the entire site has this one header. The, the footer is set up. Let me open up a page here because it's still on that header, the header module. Now I've got about us, when I'm on any page, I can now hit header and edit, edit the header of any page when I'm on that page. But let's go ahead and make a footer. Theme letter, I'm gonna give this the footer setting. And again, it's all based on the, the theme that you've chosen. Um, uh, there's another theme, I actually have it installed, I believe. The Astra theme is another is another pretty good one that gives a lot more flexibility, but it also will let you do themer layouts. Let's see, so we go back in here. Let me close this here. Wait, where was I? Oh, that's right, footer. Okay, so footer, I'm gonna set this to the entire site. I'm not gonna really add any exclusions, hit publish. Launch Beaver Builder. And actually, if I come here, I refresh the page, you can see now that default footer has been set up. But now here, I've got a footer and a header. So I can, in any page, adjust my footer and my header. So let's go back in here. I can now change this layout. Uh, let's just have some fun. Let's do a little gradient. I can do. Let's do like a gray here. Let's do gray. Uh, what's my gray? My gray was. There we go. Kind of a slight gray there. And then my text can probably be maybe. Uh, let's just choose this kind of dark color here. Come down here. We'll change this to maybe black. I don't know about you guys, but I like having that feeling of a some oomph at the bottom. Black tends to do it for me. So now I can, so you can see I've got a bit of a gradient on this. You can choose the gradient to be in any direction here. So I can do linear and I can say, let's do, oh, let's do that black, but I kind of want the, could do, let's do 180. I think the colors are too. All right, there's the, you can, so anyway, it's just an option. You can do some gradients on that. And now again, let's, this has been the footer. Uh, anyway, you can, adjust any way you want. You can add another column here. We can change the colors. Uh, this is a module called the icon module. So I can change um, icons in here. Uh, typically you'll just have the font awesome. I don't know if a font awesome. Yeah, font awesome is some of them. I have pro icons so I can have a little bit higher selection here, but typically you'll have font awesome or you just might have uh, let's see, WordPress dash, just the basic WordPress icons. So, you know, I can choose this icon and there's my text here. Uh, I can change the style. So if I want the icon can be maybe a, that blue. So I've changed that, hit save, done, publish. So now my footer has been created. So if I come out here to about us, there's my footer and there's my header. But now I can adjust my footer and my header here. Uh, let's see. Did we save this? Yeah, I didn't save it. That's why it's looking funky. There we go. Still not the greatest looking thing, but you all get what I'm saying. <laughs> ah, let me go back. Let's see, fix this a little bit because it's bugging me. Did it default? Yeah, let's do... There we go, fixed, full width, fixed. There we go, that's what I like. 
and I can get rid of this and now I can adjust this and I can put an image in here if I want. Let's do a photo, we'll throw that in here and I can do something fun here. I can choose that and I can choose the size. It's obviously way too big. So I'll choose like a 600 pixel width. I can crop this now so I can do a circle and I can do a square if I want. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it a circle for now. I can change the width. I can align it. I can set borders. So if I want to just maybe put a border on here, we'll put three pixels and we'll do a solid. So we can have a little border on it if we want. I could even do a radius and a shadow. So I can uh, let's do three, three, I can do a three. And then a shadow would be, let's do my, Get that saved in there. Christina, these things you're doing now, is this because of the themer or is this still part of what you could do in regular? Yes. Beaver? Yeah. So the photo stuff you could do with regular Beaver Builder. Okay. Yeah. So I can I can spread this out a little bit more. Ooh, that, ooh. Yeesh. Not so much. <laughs> I can blur it out maybe. There we go. A little blur there. Cool. All right. All right, without me having to use Photoshop. So I, I kind of like this, it allows me, it's a little bit speedier and I don't have to open up a graphics tool. I can create, you know, some decent um, imagery here without having to crop and, you know, be a Photoshop person. Um, let's go back here. What else was I gonna show you? First, oh, page templates. Let's just say that this is a page that you, you, you spent some time on this page. You now are thinking, all right, uh, this might be a landing page and you've got your text, your, you've got a form on here, you've got a map. And so you're thinking, all right, I want to create another landing page, but I don't want to have to go through this again. I don't want to create this page again. Sure, I've got saved modules, but how can I just duplicate this page? Go back into open up Beaver Builder again on the page you want to duplicate. Come in, you can either, uh, I can come here and I hit save template. So now I'm gonna call this like, I don't know, landing page, right? Landing page one, whatever, I'm at save. So now this page style has been saved. I can call this anytime. So I'm gonna hit done, hit publish. I'm gonna open up maybe the services one, should be blank still. So I'm gonna hit Beaver Builder again. Now come in here, I've got templates and I've got saved templates. And there's my landing page. I'm going to click this and it's going to ask me if I re remember the first time we did it, it was in the free version. I was only limited to the little box. I can replace everything I have on here. So if you be careful on this, if you've already got a page you've worked on, if you hit replace, it'll replace everything. If you hit append, it's just going to add to the bottom of what you've already done. So for now, I'm just going to do replace. Yes, I'm aware of that. And it pulls in the same page I had before. So it's huge time saver. And you don't have to have page templates like we the old style we used to do. You can, now I can adjust however I want this, right? Now it's just my own for this page, but I didn't have to start from scratch. I can now kind of spend, spend a little time tweaking how I want this to look and, you know, change it up. So I don't want this anymore, you know, anyway, but you guys get, know what I'm saying. So Huge time saver for me. Definitely these saved modules are huge time saver. I don't know what this is. This is probably just a, um, this was a, this is a page. Uh, I'm trying to figure out and tell you guys. Uh, let's see, is this gonna work? Hold on a second, guys, hold on this. Let me see if this is working here. What I'm, I'm trying to see if I can do, you know, you got sub, um, I don't know, banners or titles of the page. I don't think this is working. No, it's not, okay. Let's see, if I do, um, let me look it up, usually. So this using Themer, there's this little icon here, I hit plus and I can do the page title and it's gonna pull in the page title here. I'm gonna hit save and 
let's see, it's a, it's a global because it's orange. So anytime I change here, it's going to change throughout the whole site. But I'm going to just kind of tweak this a bit. And let's just make it, uh, let's put some color to it. Get that blue again. I want my text to be white. And let's put some padding in there. Super simple. Hit save, hit done. So now it's pulling in the title of this page. Did you guys see what I did? Yep. So that little plus icon allows me to change what text throws in here. I, and I can do that with any of these. So I, here I can change this. I don't know. I could put the post data, post date if I want. Uh, let's do February 25th. Hit save. You know, you can have some fun here. You can uh, then change this up. I don't, I want the, this format hit save and it changes the format. There we go. You can hit X and it goes right back to where you had it before. There's all kinds of options here. Post date, featured image is sometimes fun if, you, if you're if blogging. Um, uh, let me also show you something else about this, about femur. All right, so I've got a header and I got a footer. Now let's say I've got the I want to style a blog page. Now, granted, I could just keep with the blog itself. Let's see if I come into this. Uh, I think it's customized. I could just use exactly what the setting is for the theme. I could use the blog layout here. And I'm just trying to make sure I have the writing. Here it is. Blog. There we go. So if I choose blog, this is the default blog. This is just how the theme is set up for this blog. Let's say I'm like, man, well, meh, it's okay. I'm, I kind of want my own blog layout. I can come into my Beaver Builder theme. Mm. Refresh, too many tabs open. Go to my themer. I'm gonna create a new theme layout. I'm gonna call this the blog. It's a themer layout, but it's but it's my archive. Uh, archive, yeah. I can set this only to show up on post archives and I hit publish. So this is only going to show up on Posts. I think I need to change this to. Um, uh, post actually. This is going to how I'm going to the post itself, the blog post itself. All right, there we go. All right, now open up Launch Beaver Builder. So ah, this is the archive. Dang it! Let me go back. I want post single. Archive, date archive, all archives. Oh, I said it wrong. Hold on, guys. Let me move it back out. I get confused between the archive and the single post and the layout. Singular. There we go. And I want this to be post only, all posts. There we go. Sorry, guys post. I'm just styling the blog, individual blog post. I'm going to hit publish, launch Beaver Builder. So this, it's, it's defaulting everything already. Now let's say I'm not real keen on how big this is. So I'm going to kind of shore this up a little bit more. I can, let's just do my, the 90 and the 90, change this, change the color. Let's get our a photo. We'll keep it for photo now because right now what it's doing is going to pull in any featured image. So if you've got a featured image for this post, it's going to actually pull this as a background to this. So I'm not real keen on that. Let me just change this out to a color and we'll just use that blue that we've got. We'll hit save. All right. So now we've just got the title of the post. Now I can delete this, 
but you can, I just want to show you what this looks like. This is a module called post info and it's just going to pull in. I can decide the date. Nope. I want to hide the date. Let me just show it here. Um, I want to hide the, I want to keep the author. Um, I don't want to have how many comments I've got. So it splits everything out. I'm only going to show who the author is. And let's see, I can, now I can adjust this. So I can change the style. I can, I don't, maybe I don't want the author information in here. Uh, just so you know what it looks like. The author bio is, an, is a WordPress, let's see, I can search bio. So I can, just so you know, if you ever want to add it back, so you delete it, you can just add the author bio here. For now, I'll just delete it from here. Everything else you can just delete. Uh, this was gonna the before and after. This is the, the the post navigation. I would just keep that. But again, it's up to you. You have the option here. If you want comments, you can literally take out the comment feature from here. You can just delete this whole thing. So now you don't have to worry about comments showing up anymore. It's just your post. And again, you can kind of tweak some of the the um, uh, what am I thinking the padding here. So if I've got, let's just add a little bit more padding in the top here. Let's add a little bit more padding here just to give it some space. What did I do? <laughs> Extra a couple of numbers in there. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now let's, um, let's just say that I didn't put this featured image, but now I want the featured image to show up. Uh, let's put this in what I've done is I put it on the sidebar, put a photo, I'm going to add it here. Hit general. I can choose this plus and I can choose featured image. And then I can choose the size. So if it's just, it's if a thumbnail 300, 600 by 600, let's just say the default, this would be a default image. If you, if you forgot to do a featured image, you could choose one so that it's not blank. You just choose a, a, a default image and which is says here, hit save. So every time you create a blog post, your featured image will show at the, at the, at the right. Now let's give it a little padding on the right, just like you would in the old days where you put padding on our sidebar and let's make this 70. So we have a little bit more space in our content here. Now I can add the, uh, let's, Let's find our WordPress modules. Put our categories here. Let's give it some padding here again. So now every time I create a blog post, I've now designed my blog post, how I want it to look. And now every time I create a blog post, this is how this is how it'll be displayed. So that that's just the that's just just a small sampling of what Themer can do. Um, let's see. So if I click here, if I click here, it's on all of them now. So the change I made to that blog post is now on all changes throughout the whole site. Anyway, that's a lot, I know, but I just wanted to show you guys the power and show you some, you know, ways of just working on this so that you can kind of uh, do a little bit faster. And what else? In the, you guys are, aren't talking. <laughs> I'm feeling dangerous. I know, Julie, careful. <laughs> Care, just know that we make backups. Just, I'm so glad. We just have to hit a button and it just goes back. So. I haven't done anything really terrible yeah you did you've been great you're doing good julie's been really like experimenting <laughs> i think it's a coming lot out well though i like i what think I so doing. i think you're doing awesome i just like i just like the fact that you're in there and you're doing stuff it's fantastic so so i have a question i think this may be a beaver builder thing i really detest the way the drop downs on the menu look and I'd like to know if there's a way of styling. Yeah, those look good, but on mine, it does not look good. And so I want to know how they how they're styled. Are you looking for me? I've got it already. Okay, never mind. And yours is in my saved. I go in here. 
<laughs> oh no, I'm being spied upon. See, oh, this. At... Yes. Okay. I hate that. All right. Well, I want it to look good. All right. Hold on. Okay. I mean, look at the. So I've got. Um, I use another pro feature called um, uh, Power Pack, which again just adds more capabilities. And that's a whole other. Uh, but I thing. have that, don't I? I mean, that's on my yeah. site because yeah. it's on. Yeah. yeah. I, but I just want to let everyone else know that okay. they may not have that. So um, if I go into your header, I have to see what we built this with. Oh, it's the UABB. Okay. Mm, okay. I don't really use this one anymore. So, but here's my sub menu, right? Right. So I can change the background color here. So what are you thinking? You want it to be? I'm thinking I don't like the font. That's oh. what I'm thinking. The font is just like, the, it's so big and ugly. So, so typically I, I just keep the default level. Yeah, I haven't done anything with any of that, so. Yeah, I don't know why it was set to custom. Mm. Let me just see what that looks like. You've got underlines in here. Why do you have underlines? It wasn't underlined before. It's and underlined because there's subcategories. Mm. Okay, wait a minute. You haven't saved anything. I need to look and see because I've got it set up here too. That looks to me like a different. It the font that I had that I have on it now is in all caps and it's a different font than you're looking at. Let me do something really quick. I'm gonna just gonna. I just prefer the the new power the power pack menu. It gives me way more capability. So I do an advanced. Here, I it just I have way more control over it. Um, I'm for that. It's your primary one here. Yep. Should add it. There we go. All right. I'm just gonna delete this because I just don't even like it. Okay. Why didn't you delete? There we go. Okay. So, primary menu. We're gonna set this. So it's set responsive breakout. So hammer icon. Okay, that's good. Then we've got our style. I want to to the right. It should shift to the right. Yep, there we go. And I'm not sure what the underlining is for. It looks like I, there's a CSS in there. Sub menu width. So there's your sub menu. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's just see what it looks like now. I'm going to hit done, publish. I think the underline is because it's a link. No, it's underlined. Um, it's underlined because there's a CSS going on. So it looks like we don't have any background. So I need to add the background. There's a CSS that's why it's underlined. I gotta find out why that's happening. But see, that looks a lot better just right now to me. Yeah. So a lot better. The other one just looked really clunky. Yeah. Yeah. So let's. Uh... Oh, I did the wrong one. Hold on. I need the header. Header. And I went to style the sub menu now. So I went the container background, I don't know, white, just keep it white. That's fine. I, uh, now I know where to get into it. I can go. Yeah. <laughs> I, want that, I want to know where everything else there is. There you go. And our typography. Oh, so I just, I try and keep the default so it's all consistent in here. Um, it's all set to default. There's definitely a CSS going on why that we've got an underline in here. And that, um, we can just add a little code in there so it gets rid of the underline. I think if you, go weird, style, though, if you go to style, there was a, a down towards the bottom, there was a place where you underline. Uh, no, well. Sub menu, go down a little further. It shouldn't be underlining. Um, there you I thought. I thought it showed, but you were scrolling pretty quick, so maybe I missed. It. Yeah, you. The uh, underline is in Beaver Builder. There is no link underline option. You have to add it as a CSS if you want any content to be uh, underlined. Um, so I'm just there must be something in here. But anyway, so you can actually there's a lot. You have a lot more options on here, um, Julie. You can change this out, change colors. Um, even the responsive level, you can change it out. So one thing I didn't show you guys is when you do have responsive stuff here, let me just save this really quick. I'm going to hit done. 
I'm gonna go back. I don't want to mess with Julie's stuff too much. So go yeah, back it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm going to be messing with it. You just go right ahead. Okay. I think you might want to change the color. It probably doesn't quite match your, your brand here. No, um, no. Let's see if I do, what was I going to show you? Oh yeah. All right. So if I hit about us in here and um, let's say I'm not sure how it's going to look on a responsive they give me the option. I can click here and it'll collapse to what it would look like on a iPad or a tablet. So now you can see it's, it's showing a different set here. I can now add a little bit more, let's see, left 30 and 30. So I've got a little bit more um, padding on a tablet, if I click it again, I'm on an iPhone. You can see how the columns automatically collapse and, and not collapse, but um, stack. stack. Thank you, stack. And if I'm seeing that, well, it looks like I'm probably going to need a little bit more padding on the bottom. See, I did it again. Dang it. All right. So, but I just wanted to show you guys that. So now I, I can, you can toggle around and see what your site's going to look like on various responsive modes. So I highly recommend spending a little bit of time doing that um, rather than opening up on your phone. You know, I, you still need to do that, but you don't have to do it as much if you've got a tool like this. Um, let's see, sticky rows, there's your animation again. I'm trying to think if, if you guys know CSS and you feel comfortable, this is where you would add the CSS and the, I, the, the class and the ID. This is where you would add that if you want this whole row to have a specific look. Um, See, Power Pack's got some extra stuff in here I don't want to show you guys. Anyway, that's Beaver Builder in a nutshell. So I hit exit and kind of back in here. So anyway, that's Beaver Builder. All kinds of good nuggets. And how many years did it take you to learn this? You know, it didn't take me that long. Honestly, I just, you know, I just made mistake. I mean, you saw, you saw me make mistakes and I was just, mm -hmm. I just learned from it. And so honestly, it didn't really, maybe a month. Um, now to get more complicated sites, uh, I, you know, I had to get my developers involved, but when I found out all the things that I can do with Themer, I was able on my own without knowing code, build out a complete membership site with, you know, depending if you're logged in or logged out, if you're, a member or not a member, I didn't have to know code. I could just use Themer and decide on who saw what and how much they saw. I can control it to that level. I, I mean, it's pretty amazing. And I, I highly encourage you guys, if, if this is an area you wanna get further into, just play with it. You know, it didn't take long. You know, I was Everybody. telling you that if that playing around, I have found some good stuff. Mm -hmm. I just have to make mistakes. Yeah, you have to go, oops, and then ooh, here we get back, get back. So Yeah, but sometimes they're really good mistakes. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, look at that. I oh, didn't my... know it could do that. Oh, it could do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, for sure. Were you going to say something? Well, I was going to say I have an appreciation now or, or – because I've never seen Beaver Builder or anything like that, uh, about how the challenges that WordPress developers are having to implement full site editing. Yes, it's, it's, they got a ways to go. If Gutenberg wants to go full site, there's a, they got a long way to go to be able to compete with this. It'll happen for sure, but yeah. it's not near what we're this ready. And I don't even use like Elementor is similar, um, but I just don't think there's that much of a difference to be switching back and forth, but um, yeah, it's pretty tough. And and for people to say that Beaver built, you know, all these page builders uh, slow a site down. My site is completely built with Beaver Builder, and it loads under two seconds, so that's not accurate. Now, what's going to slow it down is if I chose that, and this is something I have to constantly remind my developers on, is. If you're gonna load a, a photo, just make sure that you're not loading the full size. Because even though it's, <laughs> it's, it's deceptive, it's like, oh, hey, it's the size, but it's literally loading the full image down. That could be five megabytes. If I, if I change this to, to something a little bit more appropriate, still, still is the same photo, but it's gonna load much, much faster. And that's, that's where your 
your speed comes into play. Um, as well as, of course, if you have a thousand plugins, that'll obviously affect your speed as well. But, um, you know, and again, here's one, but the difference is, and this is where I was saying, you know, if you're going to have a, a, a large image like this, make it a global row so that the next time you go to a page, this image has already been downloaded the first time. So now it doesn't have to download again. It's already cached on the computer and uh, it's, just, it's just repeated. So, Christina, um, I was looking at the pricing for Beaver Builder, mm -hmm. and it's got, you know, other than obviously the free one, there's the standard pro and agency. Uh, the stuff that you were doing sort of is like your, your middle tier um, before you went up to the theme, or was that the pro or the standard? I've, I've got pro. Um, no, I've got agency. Okay. I figured you would, but I'm just saying in terms of what you were showing, yeah. in terms of like free something and then theme or. Yeah, I, that would be pro level. Okay. I think the really, the only difference is, is this, is the theme. Not, this isn't themer. This is just the Beaver Builder theme, which I think for $200 a year is a good deal. If this is something you want to get into and you want to have a lot more control, um, you could, again, there's other themes out there. You could upgrade, you could get the standard and then see if you can find a beaver. Um, uh, who, who did I say it was? I was looking at Astra at, at Astra. their pro version. Exactly. Astra has a beaver uh, version as well. So if you've already got an Astra license, then you can, you can use the standard theme. You're okay. paying for the, you're paying for the theme and the pro version. Okay. So then where does themer come in? If it's not in any of these particular, where is themer? I thought it was in here. It should be in here. Where is themer? Premium modules. Hmm. Where is that in their website? What if you click on pricing on that page? Yeah, I'm just trying to show you guys where it is. Where's Themer on their site? It's like it's hidden for some reason, unless you search for it. That's, what am I missing? I wasn't sure if it was like a separate thing you had to buy or if it was, oh, it's one of these tiers. It is separate. Okay. Yes, so it looks like they kind of hide it, huh? If you scroll Where down a little do bit there, it says get, you know, yeah, you there's a button. Top. Right. Look, down yeah, the, the look at the very top. Yeah. There's a, it says Beaver Themer add on plugin. Yeah. But anyway, this is your themer. So it's 157, $147. Okay. So the themer is separate from whether you're the standard right. pro or agency for the right. builder itself. Gotcha. You got the okay. free version, which you can get off the WordPress plugin or the WordPress repository. The pro gives you the higher end, more modules. Um, and then the themer gives you way more, just control over everything. And I believe is the themer, let's look at the pricing on themer. See, it's going to the same place. No, it, was, it was back on the page where you just came from. Now, if you scroll down just a little further, a little further, right there. Here. So I guess it's just $147 unlimited site. So one, one or a hundred, it's $147 for theme. Can you tell if that's, do you pay for the theme or yearly as well, or is it a one-time thing as opposed to, you know, like the others I know are annual? I'm pretty sure this is, this would be annual. Okay. Everybody's yeah. annual. <laughs> Everything is annual, yeah, you know, for sure. And this is why, you know, when we have our clients there, they want, you know, we buy all these themes that, that we pay annually. I added them all up. It's about $600 a year I pay to have all the whiz bang plugins when you add them all up. So. Well, but at least they're unlimited. It's not like you pay this per site. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, that's when my clients are like, well, I want to go off on my own and do my own and host it myself, which is perfectly fine, but we pay for the the license every year. So we are like, 
you got to pay for the license. Then. <laughs> and so it gets sticky at that point because that's $600 that we're paying for every year um, to have this license. But anyway, if you're solo and you're building your own, your own page, you'd have to ask yourself, is it worth it uh, to get this deep into uh, your page editor? So any other questions, guys? Well, uh, Chris was going to share her uh, site. With <gasps> yes. What's your site? Yes. You're, You're muted, muted, Chris. Oh. oh, so you still want to see it? Yes. <laughs> sure. OK, hold Let on. Let me stop sharing here. Where did my, uh, I can uh, stop sharing. There we go. All right, throw me your link to your site, and I'll okay. share. It's pampersisters.com. Oh, you want me to type it in? The... I think I have it. Oh, got it. Okay. okay, let me share it again. Oh, look at that. Looks good. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this is great. I might have to go shopping. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Looks good. It really looks beautiful, Chris. Thank yeah. You. Look at the pretty soaps. So you did this all yourself. I remember that you showed this once before. I think it was in progress. Yes, I, 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 I did everything, including take the pictures. <gasps> you did and great. of course, make the soap. <laughs> <laughs> and and the other things one of the things i'm really proud of that 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 i today i figured it out is on my home page um i was able to click on like the slider when it goes to the second and third one that 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 action button i actually it goes to i was able to link it to a product Yay! Or, or like the other one, it goes, it linked to the, the, the product page. So I was happy about that. That's so great. Yeah, so. There you go. Okay, one question, Chris. Mm -hmm. Where's the men's version? <laughs> well, it is called Pampered Sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Not Pampered Brothers there. The men, the men shop Mother's Day and Valentine's Day for their loved ones. Aww. Okay. Uh, Did you use a builder on this one? Uh, Divi. Divi? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Um, Good job. This is so great. You. Yeah. Thank you. How long did it take you? A year. <laughs> <laughs> Really, yeah, but that's actually the, I should have came to y'all sooner because that class when you gave me the tips it was what I needed to tie in some things it helped me not be scared like that back uh the theme builder that back page you showed me mm -hmm. that was like oh man that that was just an eye opener because then it wasn't like I was going into each little page it was all right there and it kind of and, and you can look at it all on one screen and just like this class when you were showing me some things I can see I can use over here I'm not scared to move around in it that's what held me up I was always scared to that I was going to lose something which I did a lot of times and have to start over mm -hmm. you know well don't forget done that <laughs> Yeah, we've all done that. But don't forget, it usually has a saved version. So you should be able to go back. If you make a mistake, you should you should be able to go and, and look at, a, at your different versions of the same page. I, you know, I don't know where, just like you were talking about backup, I don't know where that is. I'm usually saving on top of and losing the one, be, be, you know. Yeah, so um, let's just open up one of the pages. Uh, I think I was working on the about us page here. Now, depending if it's a product, uh, well, it should still show. Uh, so here you can see on the right, you've got revisions. So mm -hmm. I've, I've hit save four times mm -hmm. and I can now kind of 
I can, if I've made a huge mistake, I can now restore different version. Oh, okay. Right. So this was the beginning. There was nothing there. And then I made changes here and I can, I can actually compare different rever revisions. Um, go next, next. Oh, well, anyway, here. So anyway, you can hit restore this version and it'll go, it'll go back. Now okay. in terms of backup, who's your host? SiteGround. Check with SiteGround, see if there is like um, an automatic backup that they're doing. And if there's- There a, is. Yeah, it, you should in the dash, in the SiteGround, not in here, Okay. But SiteGround might have something in their control panel that might, if, if you make a huge mistake and you're like, oh my God, what have I done? You should be able to go back a day. Okay. Possibly. I don't know, but ask them. They, okay. There might be something they need to turn on. If you're doing e-commerce, if right now you're probably good with a daily backup you could just go <laughs> back a day. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got active orders though, you'll lose those orders. So just be super careful with, for us on e-commerce sites, we tend to do every hour. We back up every single hour. So okay. if we lose a couple of orders, it's not as terrible as if we lost 24 hours worth of orders, but okay. talk to SiteGround. Ask SiteGround. Okay, I will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else guys? Cause I'm tired. I've been talking. <laughs> Great you talk. Hard. That was hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was. Love All right, it. cool guys. All right, so next month we've got Chris Lemma, the uh, the big Kahuna of WordPress. So yeah, he's a good speaker too. I I recommend coming out. He's a really good speaker, and he's he's very very helpful. He'll answer anything. He's super nice. So, what's his topic? Memberships, building up membership sites. Cool. cool. Of some kind. All mm -hmm. I got were membership. <laughs> He left it up to me. I'm like, well, <laughs> so, but anyway. All right, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.